Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Jonah chapter 3. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming, Forty more days, and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. This is the proclamation he issued in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let people or animals, herds or flocks, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let the people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. When God saw what they had done and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. Jonah was commissioned by God in the first chapter to go to Nineveh. He rebelled against God. He didn't want to go. I mentioned um, when we we first opened the book of Jonah that Nineveh was the capital of the Assyrian Empire, and the Assyrians were enemies to Israel. They were Gentiles. They were not Jewish. And so the, the Lord commissioned Jonah to go to these Gentile adversaries and enemies and bring them a prophetic word that God was going to destroy them that their city would be overthrown. So Jonah rebelled. And uh, you know the story of uh, Jonah was swallowed by a whale. Jonah prayed for forgiveness in the belly of the whale. And here God gives Jonah a second chance. He recommissions Jonah. We read in verse 1, Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Now, friends, you don't ordinarily get a second go-round with something as serious as this. There are many things in the kingdom of God that you get to do over until you get it right, but sometimes you don't get a second chance. This one involved a life and death struggle for Jonah, as you know, and uh, he overcame through prayer and repentance, and here he's getting a second chance on life and a second chance at, at obedience. So the Lord says, go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. This time, Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord. He went to to Nineveh. There's a notation that says Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through. And just so you you have this clear in your mind, if uh, the city was bisected by a line running from side to side, it would take three days to walk across it. We're going to find out in the next chapter that it had 120,000 occupants. So there were no skyscrapers at that time, of course, and uh, would have made for a a very expansive city. So the Lord commissions Jonah. He gives him the word of the Lord, and, and Jonah begins to go through the city proclaiming, this prophetic word. And friends, it is um, probably one of the shortest prophecies contained in the Bible. Here it is. Forty more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. And so we have to assume day one, he says, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. Uh, He walks a little further. Next day, 39 days and Nineveh will be overthrown. Next day, 38 days and Nineveh will be overthrown, etc. It's a very short recorded prophecy. But the Ninevites believed God. This word was not just words. It came with conviction. It came with power. It came with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And the Ninevites believed God. 
A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth, which is um, showing that they humbled themselves. And when Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and he too sat down in the dust. And the king of Nineveh issued a proclamation that we have recorded in our Bible. We have to assume that this was um, broadly distributed throughout the city of Nineveh. But here's the decree, or here's the, the proclamation. By the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let people or animals, herds or flocks, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink, but let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows? God may yet relent and with compassion turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. Now, this is an amazing um, proclamation for a lot of reasons, not the least of which a pagan nation is going to seek the one true God of heaven, the God of Israel, in repentance over the the words of a wandering prophet who's um, stumbling through town, giving this short word, 40 more days, and then it will be overthrown. The the 120,000 people believed it. The king issued a decree. Um, Not only were the people to respond with fasting and prayer, he commanded that the animals be humbled and all of the livestock of the city. So what was the result? Verse 10, when God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction that he had threatened. Now, I want to just um, take another minute on this before we pray. This word was not a conditional word that was given. This prophetic word was 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. There's no indication from the text that that it said, uh, unless you repent, It was just the fact that um, God was prophesying judgment had been determined, it had been decreed, it was going to happen. But the people responded by humbling themselves. The people responded with fasting and prayer. Uh, It says from the least least to the greatest, um, the entire population responded, and God had compassion on them. It says they were praying that the Lord might have compassion and turn from his anger, And God did have compassion and turned from his anger. So this unconditional prophecy, I'm going to destroy Nineveh, became conditional because of the hearts of the people turning toward God. Friends, our God loves to extend mercy. The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. He loves to extend mercy to mankind. But we have to change our ways. And uh, these Ninevites did, in fact, repent. And the Lord had mercy. So, Heavenly Father, inasmuch as our ways are not your ways, Lord, may we change our ways and repent. May we humble ourselves like the citizens of Nineveh did. And Lord, um, may you relent from whatever anger uh, you have toward us, Lord, and forgive us, receive us, Lord, and not bring on destruction, not bring on uh, the punishment that we deserve, but Lord, extend mercy. And we appeal to you, Lord, not on the basis of our own righteousness, our own behavior, but on the basis of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God. We acknowledge and thank you that he has taken our sins on himself. And we ask you, Lord, to look at us through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We receive his forgiveness and we receive your mercy today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.